Good morning. It's good to see you all here today. Nice rainy day we're having, huh? So I have my teddy bear here. You notice something about my teddy bear? If I put him down, what does he do? What's he do? He just falls down. He just sits there, doesn't he? He doesn't do anything. You know, somebody was very nice. They made this teddy bear. They gave arms and legs, and there's a nose and ears, and there's even a tail. You know, some people, when they see something like this, they might make it and decide, you know what? I'm going to worship this teddy bear. Does that make any kind of sense to you? Why would anybody worship a teddy bear? But that's what some people do. That's what the Apostle Paul tells us. Some people worship things made out of rocks or out of wood or other things. They don't worship God. But you've been given a special ability to understand who God is and what he's done for you. He did that for you at your baptism. The Holy Spirit came into your heart and he's tell, told you who God is and what he's done. And we remember all of the things that Jesus has done in our place. He went to the cross to take our sins away. Now there's a big cross back up here, back behind the altar, isn't there? There's a big cross over there that Jesus is carrying, but we don't worship the cross. We worship the one who was on the cross. We worship Jesus, and now he's risen and living in heaven for us, and he comes to us, and he helps us, he protects us, and he gives us the job to go and tell others who he is. Let's pray about that. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to earth and living a perfect life, for giving that to us, and now for giving us the mission to go and tell others. Help us to show your love in all that we do, and help us to spread your gospel everywhere. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please stand if you're able. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace through Jesus, which the Holy Spirit assures us we have today, all because he died and rose again. Today's sermon is from the Gospel lesson appointed for the sixth Sunday of Easter, taken from John chapter 14, beginning at verse 16. We're going to hear how the Holy Spirit is the best farewell gift ever that Jesus gives to you and to me by his grace. The Bible says this, Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them, he is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord, we pray. Lord Jesus, sanctify us by your truth. Your inspired word is truth. Amen. You may be seated. In the name of our triune God, dear believers and friends of the risen Christ, when friends say goodbye, especially close friends, it can be hard. Uh, when friends say goodbye, emotions run high. I mean, we enjoy being with our friends, and they mean a lot to us. They stand by us through thick and thin. Maybe you're thinking about friends you made back in, in school. Maybe the times you spent on road trips. Or just maybe having those friends close to you made you feel a little bit more secure. We have great memories of them, and we appreciate their support. And yet, graduations, right? Job changes or retirements require that our friends move across the state or maybe even across the country. And that sure is a reality with MLC graduation this weekend. It's at these times it's customary to exchange farewell gifts. Here's something to remember me by. Maybe it's a photo that we exchange that speaks a thousand words, or 
Maybe it's a plaque engraved with names and dates. Gifts like this, farewell gifts, well, they're deeply treasured and appreciated. Still, it's hard to say goodbye. Understatement, right? In our sermon reading for today, Jesus is saying goodbye to his closest followers. And as the Son of Man, don't ever get the idea that it was easy for him. Remember, Jesus is 100% true man. It hurt to say goodbye. For in our reading, we hear it was an emotional time. It was the upper room of Holy Week on Monday, Thursday. And Jesus is saying the final goodbyes to his disciples. Usually we think of this time as a time where he instituted the Lord's Supper. Well, yeah, he did that too. But Jesus also knew as 100% true God what was about to happen within minutes. How Jesus would be betrayed by his friend closest to him. Abandoned by all of those who said, Lord, we will never leave you. How he would be unfairly tried, convicted for crimes he never did. Tortured, crucified, dead. And three days later would rise again. All that was going to happen within minutes. And yet we don't find Jesus just thinking about himself, did he? Instead, in love, he was thinking about those closest to him. And he knew how in love those disciples were going to need assurance. Three long years they had spent with him, seeing him every day, waking up, walking, and talking with him. And now Jesus would soon be gone out of their presence. He knew they were going to need assurance. He knew that they would need a farewell gift, and Jesus was about to give it to them. But it wasn't mere, a mere plaque or photo. Instead, he literally gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God. In that upper room, Jesus wasn't just thinking about his followers when he said goodbye. He was thinking about you and me. Even though God's plan to save the world put Jesus on planet Earth 2,000 years ago, Jesus also knew that we needed assurance too. We need assurance yet today. Sometimes we get spooked, even as adults. We get scared. We need to know that Jesus is with us. And so God's word assures us today that we share in that one of a kind farewell gift. So God's word in John chapter 14 assures us as we work through these verses how the Holy Spirit is a gift to us and he's the best farewell gift ever. Why? Because first of all, we're going to learn that his gift comfortably meets our needs. And secondly, the gift of the Holy Spirit carefully manages our needs. Listen to what Jesus promises his disciples. His gift comfortably met their needs. And their needs were great. If Jesus was leaving them, they needed something, I should say someone, that would help them. And think how much Jesus practically helped them every day. When they had a problem, they could go right up to Jesus and he'd solve it on the spot. Think how when the disciples were faced with feeding 5,000 men, plus women and children, they didn't have a clue what to do. But they knew who did. They took their problem right to Jesus and he solved it by means of a miracle, feeding all those people with just a boy's small lunch. Or what if they had a burning question that they needed answering before they could walk up to Jesus and he'd take care of them? We think of the disciple Thomas, right? Remember how Thomas had that deep spiritual question, where was Jesus going and how could they follow? And that's when Jesus answered with those famous words in John chapter 14, right before our reading. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. With these words, Jesus clearly told them that he was the one way to heaven, that faith in him would bring salvation alone. But now with Jesus leaving, what were they going to do? Oh, Jesus' farewell gift comfortably met their needs. And this is how Jesus explained the gift they were about to receive. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Yes, that's someone was described here in the Greek as 
a paraclete. And the NIV, you heard it, was an advocate, someone who speaks in behalf of someone else. It could be translated counselor, one who gives comfort or aid. The disciples had already experienced the advocate or the Holy Spirit's help when they were brought to faith, when they first followed Christ. For they rem we remember the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings living faith to stone-cold dead hearts. Well, they had already experienced that. But now Jesus would transform them by the work of the Spirit from being scaredy-cat disciples behind locked doors to followers of Christ that would be willing to sacrifice anything and everything, all for the sake of spreading the gospel. The Holy Spirit would give them that ability. But how would they recognize the Spirit? Well, Jesus already tells them ahead of time. He says, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Our world doesn't accept anything it can't see or understand. Now you know why the world rejects the Spirit. The Spirit is invisible. And we, no one can wrap their heads around everything that the Holy Spirit could do. How would the disciples know they had the Holy Spirit? Well, because they simply believed Jesus' words. They knew Jesus would never lie to them. They believed that they had the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit literally lives inside every believer. When things looked bleak, Jesus reminded them he had everything under control because his farewell gift comfortably met their needs. But does it ever occur to you that you and I share in that same farewell gift? Even though styles have changed from togas and tunics to designer polos and suits, our needs really haven't changed. You know, when someone asks you today, how are you, how do you answer? I'm fine, right? But are you? Really? You know, let me put it this way. Have you ever walked into the Walmart in town, gone down to the end of the row, and saw a little child separated from his mother? With a loud voice and many tears, he cries out, I want my mommy! Nice to know for Mother's Day you're still important. Well, kids are so much more truthful than adults. Even though you and I might not get lost in a Walmart, how often don't doubts plague our hearts? Doubts like, what if I am the only one here in the universe? What if there's no one else to come and comfort me? Yes, how helpless and hopeless we can feel as we go down that road. And yet, when doubts plague us, we need to remember we have a, we have a Savior who loves us and has freed us by his blood. And we don't have to just, just believe the Holy Spirit is the one who does that for us. See, according to the Bible, the spiritual score is still Jesus and his followers won, the devil and death, nothing. We have that Easter victory because our Savior lives. We didn't see it, but the Holy Spirit convinces us it happened. Romans chapter eight asks the questions, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The answer is no one. No one because we know we have a Savior who loves us and will comfortably meet our needs. But how do we know this for sure? It's because we share in Jesus' farewell gift. Jesus gives us something to remember him by. He actually gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comfortably meets our needs by comforting us. Yes, through God's word and through his sacrament, we're reminded we have the gift of the Spirit. We sang in that hymn, God's own child, I gladly say it. Because we've been baptized, we are children of God. We belong to him. We have the Holy Spirit. Today, we have the honor of taking communion. And for some of our young teens, it's the very first time. Every time you take communion, you get strength. Strength to say no to Satan, strength to say yes and follow God, how we need to crave that sacrament every week. Yes, receiving a gift that meets our needs now is great, but how about one that help, also helps us in the future is even better. 
That describes the work of the Spirit, as Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Yes, Jesus' farewell gift carefully managed their needs by always pointing them back to the Savior. Jesus already knew they were going to feel like orphans. They were going to feel all alone. And Jesus said, I'm not leaving you as orphans, even though they felt that way. That's why we don't go on our feelings. We go on the facts that Jesus tells us. They would no longer see Jesus face to face, but the Holy Spirit would convince them that Christ was with them every single day. His plans were to leave them for a while, but he'd return, and the Holy Spirit carefully managed their needs to help them what their minds couldn't comprehend. Jesus was with them always. Our text concludes, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Yes, physically speaking, he'd help them love God and show that love to one another. How were, the Holy, how were those disciples going to live? Well, now they had a purpose to remember those that most of the world would forget, to forgive when maybe others wouldn't want to forgive them, and to share the love of Christ and to worship him and witness to others, even if not everybody else wanted to hear. Jesus still gives us that best farewell gift ever, and that gift carefully manages our needs. Yes, the Holy Spirit teaches us to love, to serve, to help. And as we share the message of Christ and what he's done for us, we have that purpose to be witnesses for him. Our job isn't to do the converting. That's the Spirit's job. Our job is simply to speak the truth in love and to show others that love as we show them that the love of Christ lives in us and the Holy Spirit makes all that possible. You know, farewells this side of eternity, they're hard. It's especially hard to say goodbye to those loved ones at a funeral or at a cemetery, be they an older adult like a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa or a younger person that sometimes we have to bury, a child or a grandchild. We miss them. But as Christians, the Holy Spirit convinces us that we don't have to say goodbye to those who were in Christ. We know we will see them again at that heavenly reunion, guaranteed. It makes me think of the German word, Auf Wiedersehen. When you live in New Ulm, you need to know German words like that. You know, Auf Wiedersehen doesn't mean goodbye forever. Even if you don't know German, let me teach it to you. Auf Wiedersehen literally means until we see each other again. As Christians, we have extra reason to say that. Either we are going to be together again, or we're going to see each other in eternity, all because of the work of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit convinces us it's true as we hear his word. And nothing could be better than that. So my Christian friends, on this Mother's Day, farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, and amen. For our stewardship thought, we'd like to share with you a short video about a letter that went out to our congregation in the last two weeks. My name is Bryce Belter, and like you, I'm a member here at St. Paul's Church. I serve on the Board of Gifts and Talents, and we'd like to thank you very much for the gifts that you consider giving to our church and helping spread the word of Jesus Christ our Savior. Thank you for that. Our board sent out a letter to every member of our congregation helping us to be involved in the five guidelines for my St. Paul's Church offerings. On the reverse side of that church letter, you will see the seven-step plan for determining my St. Paul's Church offerings. At a time such as this, when we have got problems on our minds, things that are happening in our communities and society, the one thing we know we can surely turn to for salvation is God. It doesn't matter where you feel upon where we are on this earth and what time it is that we're living here. As long as you know 
that you are with God and trust in his salvation, you will end up being saved. I'm using this letter with my wife, Shelly, to help us determine what we can give as our motivation as offerings. It's quick, it's easy, and it's important. Extra copies of this letter are available at the back of the church, and we would certainly appreciate if you could pick one of those up. Have a wonderful day. God bless you, and thank you.